Yeah, ho, West Coast. What's going on? We are well. We are well. We are back together again, minus one of our uh, compadres here, but that's okay. We'll, we'll forge on without Mr. Mike. He may join us. He may jump in. We'll see. Then we'll all be better for it. Uh, one show, one drink, part of the What We Watch When We Drink podcast from the Booze Dancing Entertainment Network and your unofficial podcast of taco trucks of all of North America. We are here again to talk television and drink. And we have this very special guest. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Before we bring her in, let's not spoil it. Let's roll the intro. Welcome to One Show, One Drink, part of the What We Watch When We Drink podcast from the Booze Dancing Entertainment Network, where we take one show or film and pair it with one boozy beverage. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, Audible, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also find us on boozedancing.com. And if you have any questions, comments, show or drink suggestions, email us at boozedancing at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Shall we uh, bring in our guest? We should. All right, let's bring her in. Joe! Welcome. Joe! Welcome, welcome Joanne. Joanne McInnes, the Whiskey Lassie. The Whiskey Lassie. I forgot the Whiskey Lassie. I forgot that part in the intro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very important. Well, Very important. The most important part. That's how we know her. Well, we knew. We we knew she liked whiskey. That was a just a little bit a given. A little bit. We didn't know she liked TV. I think that's an understatement on both counts. Probably is an understatement. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about your TV love. Not not what our topic is tonight, but tell us about your whiskey, your your television past, your television present. Ooh. Well, honestly, I have to say that I'm I'm not usually a person that watches a lot of television, but with all the COVID madness that we've been experiencing and the fact that after a long day at the office, I was mostly brain <laughs> dead and jello. Um, it was easy to follow. And when you say office, office, and when you say office, you mean the, your bedroom? <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much. Or the spare bedroom, den. the den, the kitchen table at the beginning. The Wherever cell. the whiskey and the food are. The windowsill at one point, I literally had my laptop set up in the windowsill because I couldn't sit at the kitchen table at one point anymore. So ergonomics, you know. I gotcha. Yeah. So this is the story of the world in the last two years, isn't it? Isn't it nuts? It's crazy. It is. Yep. But thankfully, uh, I am better stocked than most liquor stores and have plenty of glassware and plenty of time on my hands so it was easy to put the feet up grab a whiskey and watch all kinds of weird things to be quite so here you go what do you watch when you drink depends on the mood um if i go into what i call the dark places i have a tendency to watch a lot about the second world war for some bizarre reason i've gotten on a kick of watching uh Anything that has to do with Hitler or Nazi concentration camps, like really dark. And that's usually Ooh. like, yeah, if I'm drinking. Document- documentaries yeah, or movies? Yeah, or- documentaries. Oh, there's a lot. There is yeah, a lot out a lot. there. When you grew up, or even now, do, so did you watch a lot of American TV? No. So we didn't have cable. We had two really? channels. <laughs> no, sorry. Two? Three. Three. We had three channels. Wow. Two were French Canadian and one was from Bangor, Maine. Oh. oh, my God. Yeah. Hmm. I mostly grew up watching, like, French-Canadian television, which was interesting. It was very interesting. So, and very French. Wow. And very Francais. Yes, very, uh-huh. very Francais. But, it, but, but like, oh. Canadian French. Even worse. What does that mean? Quebec French. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I didn't, Quebec I didn't, French. I didn't say There's a that. difference. I didn't say that. There is. There's a massive difference. What was on the, uh, the channel from Maine? I remember. Bob Ross. Yeah. Bob Ross. Yeah. There was, <laughs> oh, we, that's funny. We had, I think we had PBS. I think that's right. what we had. See, Bob Ross. That makes sense. Yeah, we PBS. would have had yeah. Bob Ross, and we would have had like kids programming, Cooking with Julia Child. Little Masterpiece uh, Theater. Masterpiece Theater. There you go. No. Upstairs, Hi, downstairs. I don't remember that one, but it's probably something my parents would have watched. I'm sure you got Monty Python. That's funny. I did watch a lot of Monty Python, you had to watch actually, Monty Python. when I got a little bit older. I yeah. got a little bit older. Right, 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 right. I was obsessed with Monty Python. That is amazing. Yeah, but mostly French That's... television. Okay, so so we've got World War II stuff and Holocaust stuff and all that joyous stuff. Anything else? What, what else? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. If, if I was in a mood for, like, I just needed a good laugh. Um, I was watching Space Force. 
Oh, is that any good? Oh, space I really liked it. It is quirky as hell. I'm a big John Malkovich fan. So oh, that was yeah. like the Malkovich main reason I decided to kind of tune into it. Uh-huh. Um, Season two, I think, right? Yeah, just it's dropped. just it just literally just dropped. And I also, I'm ashamed to say that I had never watched any of the Breaking Bad. Oh, it's good. When it first oh. came out. So yeah. I binged, I binged Breaking Bad. That was Bad, very good. And the best pairing for Breaking Bad is a Lafroy quarter cask. <laughs> it was just, that makes was, sense. I think I went through three bottles. I was going to say meth, but thing. you know. Well, yeah. you you know. <laughs> Lacroix <laughs> quarter cask over and over and over again when you're binge watching is yeah it's it's it was an interesting trip that's for sure. Uh-huh. Did yeah. you uh, have you watched um, Better Call Saul? Yes, I followed up with Better Call oh, Saul. Oh, so. I that's coming. That's yeah. coming next month. Right? Yeah, and I would argue I, I think season. I may like it better. I I oh I don't know. See, because because my background is chemistry, like okay, I was enthralled with. And yeah. the writing, I mean, the writing is good in Better Call Saul, but it takes a lot to surprise me. Like, I, I don't like when shows are, um, what's the word? Oh my God, I'm thinking in French and speaking in English, and this is not working for me right now. We do that all the time. When That's things okay. are so, like, predictable. Uh-huh. I'm that kid that goes to the movie and sits next to the friend and goes, this is what's going to happen next. And they're like, shut <laughs> up! And it does happen. Oh, it's you. It's me. I, well, she's it's the one. Uh, yeah. That's funny. Or I figure things out like mid movie. I'm like, or I'm tired of the explosions in slow motion, you know, yeah. towards the camera. <laughs> well, the artistic look. Oh for, for me, it's really the journey, though. It's really not, I don't really care about the ending, like, spoiler. Uh, but you still got to get there. Yeah. No, the ending is usually disappointing because you're always like, oh, that's it. Like, no. Speaking of uh, Breaking Bad, we, Angie and I have been trying our darndest to get Messrs. Paul and Cranston to come on the podcast through social media. And this yeah, hasn't worked yet. To, to, so they could uh, pimp out their uh, mezcal that they've got. What's, What's it called? Uh, to... do, do... Dos Hombres. Dos Hombres. That's it. Yeah, yeah, Dos Hombres. That would be fantastic, especially Cranston. I wouldn't even say a word. I would just let him talk because he's a great storyteller. That would blow my mind. Hey, if you guys are listening. Oh my god. Yeah, we can't get yeah. him. I want to. I also want to get Steven Soderbergh, and I want oh. him to talk about his stuff from. Uh, he's bringing some stuff up from South America. What's he bringing? Sincani something. There is so many freaking celebrity oh, yeah. booze mm-hmm. things now. It's insane. Yeah, it's fun. It's nuts. Well, it's fun. It's great. Well, revenue stream. Well, that's a good way to move into what we're going to be drinking tonight. Let's talk whiskey. Let's and talk whiskey. I think, was this Joanne's idea? Well, you know, we, we were talking shows and Joanne pitched three shows. So I wanted to find something that we could all kind of have access to without having to pick up another streamer. Like that dead still looked awesome. I watched the preview. It looked fantastic. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. That that's the one so that. Good. But I couldn't do another streaming that's, service right now. Okay. So I, I make up. That's the Raj one, right? Yeah. yeah. Raj wants us to watch that one. Acorn, I think, does like a, you could do like a seven day trial or a one month trial. So I may just do it, pick it up, and then just drop it. But it's supposed to be really good. It looked great. It really did it's, look great. It's dark comedy. Because Raj talked about it, yeah. but I never saw the trailer. And the trailer was fantastic. So it looks like fun. Yeah. Yeah. It looks really fun. Um, so we, what was it? It was Dead Still. What was the second one? There was Miracle Workers, which is mm-hmm. the one we're going to talk about. And what was mm-hmm. the third one? I don't I remember. Don't remember. There was a third. Oh, it was um, killing. Eve. It was killing. Oh, oh killing, killing Eve. Eve. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we did miracle workers, and then you know they were like they're angels, aren't they? The people working behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. So I was trying to think of a pairing in season one, and I said angels envy. So that's our perfect. And angels envy rye. The rum cask. Yes, or is a rum cask finish correct? It's a rum cask finish, and, and I believe it's a MGP rye because it's the ninety-five five. It is. I love the bottle. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It is beautiful. Shall we pour some? Oh, my, I, oh yeah. We'll pour, we'll do a little cheers, and then we'll go into it. All right. I'll even make the... There we go. Yes, we are. There you go. I got a little glug glug, too. Ooh. All right, folks. Glug glug. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. So this came out when, around like 2013? Yes. And we reviewed it way back in 2013, and I haven't really had it that often since, but I remember really, really enjoying this. It's hard to walk away from that bottle. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful. Oh, it is. It's just so pretty. Every time I look at it, there's something new I see on it. Ooh, la, la, la. Oh, oh. Oh, the nose on this thing, it's really fun. It is. It doesn't remind me of rye. No. 
I find most rice delicate, like and mm. floral, and this does not have that vibe whatsoever. No, this you get that little sweetness. You, you get a little pineapple. Do we know where the rum cask is from? No idea. I don't think they divulge that information. Well, they do it in batches too, right? Yeah, they do. Yes. Because I remember when it first came out and it kind of got popular, a lot of folks, you know, the whiskey uh, geekarati, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, they would all complain about the batch variation because apparently there was a lot of it. I vaguely remember a lot of buzz about that. You know how we can get. Annoying. I'm over that. So, you know, now I just want to drink. That's the whole point of batch though, isn't it? That's true. The inconsistencies. Yeah. I mean, that's what you want. You want the batches to be different. Oh, I agree. I don't have a problem with it. Oh, this is delicious still. I feel the same way about Abuna. Abuna comes out with different casks all the time, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And some of them are like, some of them are like, oh my God, like number 37 still sticks out in my brain is probably one of the best casks I've ever had. If Mike was here, he would say batch 28. Would he really? Yeah. Would he really? He's like, oh, that's he's like, oh, but it's no batch 28. Because we, we've had numerous, I've never had a bottle, but they've had numerous bottles amongst the neighbors. And it's always like, oh yeah, 47 was good, but it's no batch 28. <laughs> I think it was 28. Bozzy's like this with Castrank Lefroy. Okay. Ooh, batch seven was I the best for me. That. There you go. Okay. We need to get Joanne and Bozzy together. Are you about Castrank Lefroy? That's just nice. I know. It's really good. It, I haven't had this in years and I still like it. It's got a little bitiness to it. Like a little... Like a little slap on the face. Not a not a big slap, just a wake up. 95% rye should be a little spicy, right? And then you got this mm. whole thing with the rum cast that makes it, you know, kind of balances out that spiciness. And I don't know, the mouth feels really good. I just, it feels nice. It is. Mm. And there's that little bit of sweetness, like a little like burnt sugary sweetness going. So some of the, some of the, the polarization of this is that it's too sweet. I don't think it's too sweet. I don't think that's true. Mm. No, I don't think it's too no. sweet. I saw someone on, on a, some post said, oh, I'll put on my pancakes. It's like syrup. Oh, come it's on. Like syrup. They've obviously not had Crown yeah. Royal maple syrup. That's right. Now, I would probably take it and turn it into a like a creme brulee sauce. Oh, that would be good. Ooh. That'd be nice. Is it terrible that I put wow. whiskey in just about everything? No wonder my mom thinks no. we're alcoholics. No. Ah. There needs to be like a really good, good cook mm-hmm. that's alcohol centric. Yes, you know, it's always two drops of some rum and it's not even specified what rum, but there needs to be like, this is a Angel's Envy cream brulee. Yeah. I mean, and then it's, it's the major part of the, the, the recipe. Let's go do that after we're done with this podcast. Okay. okay. That'll work. Okay. That'll work. We'll write a cookbook. Well, let's get on to our television watching here. Miracle Workers. Now, Joanne brought this to our attention and I knew of it because my wife watched it and I only saw like the first episode or two when it came out, like in whenever this was, 2017-ish mm-hmm. maybe? I was intrigued, but I didn't stick with it. And this was actually fun to go back to and really dive into. So we'll let Joanne pick it up from here. How did you find this? Why did you stick with it? What? Why do you like it? Oh my God, I saw it on TikTok. Yeah, and, and then we'll talk about... what. And then we can talk about, what'd you say? I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Click, show over. <laughs> That's it. And we're done. Somebody sent me a crazy little, like it was just a TikTok with Steve Buscemi doing something bizarre. I think it was, uh, it was, it was likely the episode, one of the episodes where he actually goes to visit his parents or something. Oh, okay. He's walking in with the bag and the flip phone or something. And I was yeah, like, yeah. what is this? So I looked it up. Uh, huge Steve Buscemi fan. I have a friend who um, can get just about anything I want to watch on a specific streaming thing. Nice. Yeah. So I was like, can you look this up? Can you get this for me? Look at me. Pirating. Look at me. Pirating. Can you look this up? Can you get no. this up and get this for me? Because <laughs> nobody actually talks anymore. We just text, right? So he did. Yes. He got me uh, the first season. And I, I watched the first episode kind of like going, hmm, I don't really know if I understand or quite get this yet. And then... I watched the second episode and it sort of kind of like grew on me like a, a scab that I just wouldn't stop picking. Okay. And then by the fifth episode, I was hooked and I was, I was like, that's it. I love it. Texted my friend, give me more. So binge watched all three seasons. I watched the first four episodes kind of off and on over the last couple of weeks. I've been trying to get through it. I put it on too late. I get tired. I get like, I fall asleep and I wake up. And the thing, you know, the streamer keeps going. So I wake up and I'm in like season two, episode five. I'm like, what the hell just happened? So 
I keep going back to the beginning again. So I've watched episode one probably three times. And then tonight, I finally, after I, I was working until eight, and then I said, all right, I got to watch the last three episodes. So I watched episodes five, six, and seven. I should say the end of four, and then five, six, and seven. And by five, they got me. Yeah. It took four episodes to get into it. So for those who have not seen this show, this is a 2019 show, uh, sitcom comedy that came out on TBS and it's based on um, a novel from a writer named Simon Rich and his novel was uh, called What What in God's Name and, and, and the short story called Revolution which is the second season which is based on and it's uh, I don't know how do you explain this it's uh, Life of God played by Steve Buscemi and we follow along with uh, the the cast on heaven who kind of manage things going on down on the surface of the earth where the humans are. And Daniel Radcliffe is one of these uh, angels. Well, he makes wishes come true, right? He answers prayers. That's it. That's the one. Right. He is joined by a helper played by Geraldine Visnawan, I think her name is. And she comes to help him, but she's kind of a go-getter. She wants to kind of turn things around. And he's kind of like, eh, he's kind of boring. Let's kind of not change things up too much. And then things change. Anybody want to follow up with the how it changes the series? Basically, they go to God. They just kind of like barge into his office. And she's trying to talk about all these changes she wants to make and the stuff that she thinks she can, she can do. And he kind of gives them a, I don't want to say an ultimatum, but he kind of like throws a, a challenge to them and because he wants to destroy the earth he's done he's, he's he's hating humans he doesn't like where it's going he just wants to start from scratch and create a revolving lazy susan restaurant with the earth <laughs> is what he wants to do which makes no sense whatsoever and so he throws them uh, a challenge and he gives them a certain amount of time and they do like a doomsday 14 days yes they've got two weeks to make this one particular wish or or prayer come true and that's where it just goes off the rails and they start doing some really weird stuff <laughs> and it's two people to get them to basically to have it come together, come together. Oh. yeah well they have to kiss yeah. and, and they have to kiss they have, they have to, to kiss they have to kiss right. that's right or the the world will implode mm-hmm. god is played by our one of our the great actors of our time steve absolutely Shemmy, who we all love him I and do we could name each of us could yes he is godlike right he is so great and the fact that he's doing a network tv show to me is well tbs is just amazing i see him as a hbo guy boardwalk empire he was on the sopranos fargo oh i forgot about that oh how could you forget him in fargo he's the little guy i know oh my gosh and you know he's had a quirky career and it gets quirkier as he gets older he's in portlandia in a few episodes he's all over the place and this it sort of fits that mm-hmm. right it's but it's tbs you think this how how quirky can this be it's pretty quirky we were going back and forth about buscemi and i did what were we talking a little making a little basketball analogy what he, i said he was like the sixth man of the year yeah six man because he was yeah. always never like he was never a leading man Generally speaking, he's, he's never leading the big man. leading man, no. right? But he is the he is the the saver of many a film back in the nineties. You yeah. know, Con Air, not a very good movie. He was great. He's an Armageddon, and he's always interesting. Like he's always good. There's always like these really good character actors, which is what he is. Yes, and he saves the day. He was great in Reservoir Dogs. Oh, that's probably where I. That's the first time I saw him was Reservoir Dogs. He's in uh, Miller's Crossing, too. I think he's in a few of the Coen Brothers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in that. I know he's in Fargo for sure. He's got a big Mm -hmm. part in Fargo, you know, and he directed a couple movies. Is he in Barton Fink? Yep. Mm -hmm. He's in Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great in Big Lebowski. Now, granted, he was overshadowed by John Goodman, but still, he was really good in Big Lebowski. The fact that he's in this show is kind of pumps it up a lot for me. Daniel Radcliffe is in this show. Now, a lot of people don't know who Daniel Radcliffe is. He had, he had this little thing, you know, a while back. This Harry Potter thing. Ooh. I don't know if you guys ever yeah. heard of it. Not a fan. Not a fan. Doesn't ring a bell. It's this iconic movie series. And to get away from that in some way is tough. He's Harry Potter. And he's actually done a lot of weird things since Harry Potter. He was in the theater in London. Naked. Naked. That's right. Naked. Yes, naked. Oh, he was naked. He was naked. Magic wand and all. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Get that that was like a little Harry Potter joke. Um, 
and uh <laughs> and now he's in this quirky little show on tbs on american tv yeah. it's kind of wild to me and he's not afraid to tear away these things that we all think about him he's not just harry potter he's actually a really good actor mm-hmm. and he's actually a really good comedic actor which you don't really see a whole lot in harry potter so now he's an adult and he's kind of the lead dude in this this series and he's i think he's really good so were you hooked from the beginning of the show or did it take a little bit? Well, I was hooked when I saw it whenever it came out, but I didn't go back to it. So you were hooked, but then you were unhooked. Too much other TV probably two, three years ago gotcha. whenever it came out. So this was great to go back to it. And I got hooked pretty quick. I laughed. I laughed. I cried. It was good. The first three episodes didn't make me laugh. I, I wasn't crazy about it. It was all over the place. You know, the acting was a little bit like over the top. But tonight... I was in the halfway point of episode four, and then I, it started to click. I think it helps that I was awake when I was watching it, so that maybe made a little more sense. Once you basically knew where it was going, you know, once the story settled and everybody's got their, you know, they, they all have their, their game to play, all the role players, you know, they have a goal and they're all working together, then it kind of kicked in, you know? And then when, when God went to see his parents, then it all made sense. Yep. I'm like, what yes. the hell is wrong with God? There's yep. something wrong here. Yeah, He's a middle a- child. Oh, spoiler. He's a middle child. Then it all made sense. He's trying to make mom and dad happy and it never does. And proud. And it's sad. And-, and that's always your first mistake, right? Yeah. I find the DNA of this show on the back end fascinating. Okay. DNA. Look at you. These books are written by this author, these short stories. Simon Rich. He is a Harvard kid. Huh. He's like in his 30s. So we hate him already. <laughs> I think he was editor in chief of the Harvard Lampoon. The jumping stone, the jumping step. Stepping stone? Stepping stone? Jumping stone. Yeah, stepping stone. Let's say stepping stone. Because <laughs> that's actually the right word. That's the right phrase. The stepping stone from, the, from Harvard, the Lampoon, is what? Saturday Night Live. And that's where he was a writer for a few years. And who's a producer on the show? Say it. Lauren Michaels. Guess who's a producer of this show? Of Miracle Workers? Lauren Michaels. So it's this whole SNL, Harvard, DNA, and um, you're going to like this, Ange. Looking more about Simon Rich, his dad is Frank Rich. Who's Frank Rich? Hold on. Frank Rich was a New York Times writer for 40 years. Op-ed guy. Really? Pulitzer Prize winning guy. Now is in television. Executive producer of Veep. Ah. Producer of, wait for it. Succession. Oh. Is that wacky? That's interesting. It all goes back to Succession. I mean, it all goes back to Harvard. You can go from Harvard to SCTV, which is in Canadian. And it's all kind of connected. Wasn't Conan O'Brien also the uh, editor of the Harvard Lampoon? Yes, he was. Okay. Interesting. But he's probably, what, at least 10 years older than Simon Rich, I would think. Well, this kid is 37. He looks like he's 15, but, but he's 37, apparently. Huh. He was a writer on Wonka that's coming out next year oh, really? in 23. Interesting. A Willy Wonka movie. Huh. Oh, oh, that's right. And he was a writer and producer of American Pickle. It was really fun. I loved it. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen oh, it. It's oh, it's pretty should, good. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's on the list. And that's sort of in this weird world, yeah. too, of this kind of quirky story. The kid's got some chops, I think. Uh, bastard. I hate him already. How is our how is our in- Angel's Envy? Delicious. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. How much was left? That was the last of it. I saved it. I oh, saved it just you saved for it for us? I may need to refill. Oh, I've been holding oh, on to it you. for quite some time. Just oh. It's one of those, you know, when you have like the end of a bottle and so i put it in a sample bottle so that it wouldn't oxidize so gotcha. but every once in a while i'd get like really pissed off about something and go that's it i'm drinking no <laughs> and it would just sit there yeah. so oh yeah. i'm glad nice. i shared it with you guys thank I'm you i'm glad you did too remember i said every time i look at this bottle i find something different yes. on it. i never noticed this i don't think i've ever seen this on a bottle so on the side label where it has the batch oh, number yeah, yeah, yeah. and the bottle number it's handwritten yeah right uh, this one says batch. I think it says 13C. Somebody has really bad writing. The bottle number is 3373. Below that, it says uncorked on. And there's a little space. So you can write when you open oh, it. Oh, really? I didn't notice that. Yeah. Uh, if I can show you. Sweet. Uh, what was that? Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that? I see it. 
That's interesting. I've never seen our it. listeners can't see it, but we can see it. Side note: when we when we saw the Angels Envy, I was scrolling through the HBO Max, and there's a movie called Wings of Desire. Have you ever seen it? It's it's no. an older movie. It's probably from like the late '80s. I think I saw it when I was in college. So it's directed by uh, Vim Vendors, German director. So there's these angels hovering above Berlin, and they're just kind of keeping an eye on people and all this stuff. The only people that can see them are children, of course, which is you know that's kind of a trope, right? where kids can only see like dead people or whatever. So they see these angels, but the angels are kind of like keeping an eye on people. And one of them kind of wants to be human and he falls in love with this woman and it's all shot in black and white. And it's really bizarre. It's really, really bizarre. Like a real like impressionist kind of film. Peter Falk has a little cameo in it. The lead angel is this guy, Bruno Ganz. He's a German actor. I think he was in this movie downfall. He might've played Hitler. It was like about the final. Oh, that sounds familiar. I think it might have been him, but it's it's a really interesting movie. I started watching the trailer, and I got kind of sucked into the trailer. Now I kind of want to see it again. So I almost thought, is it in German? Yeah, it's in German. Peter Falk plays himself, though. He plays like an actor. <laughs> oh, not himself, but Peter Falk. He plays an actor. He plays as Peter Falk. Oh, that's so weird. And he's filming a movie in in you know in Berlin. I haven't seen this movie in like thirty years, but I think he's actually like a fallen angel. Like he comes to Earth and he becomes a human. I think I vaguely wow. remember that. I don't know. Because he could see the angels. What was the name of this again? The name of the movie is called Wings, Wings, of, Wings Desire. of Desire. Wings of Desire. Yeah, check out the trailer. The trailer is really cool. Down. Der, der Himmel über Berlin. Yeah, sure. Something like that. I guess it's probably like the angels over Berlin. I'm, I'm looking at the... You know, they did a remake of it with, with Nicolas Cage, actually. I'm not a fan. Nicolas Cage? No, not really. I, you know, I like 80s, oh. 90s Nicolas Cage. One of the best films of the 1980s, I said. Which one? Wings of Desire. The, the, the remake. Uh, oh, the remake or the original? When, when did it come out? When did the original come out? 87. Oh, that would, that would have been the original yeah, one. Yeah, it was, one it was pretty cool. It was weird. It was definitely weird. Wow. Oh, my God. I think I saw the one with Nick Cage in it because it's Meg Ryan. I think I did, too. Meg, Meg Ryan. Ryan. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yes. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. I, I can't remember what it's called, bet. though. I lost a bet. City of Angels. That's yes. it. I lost a bet and had to go watch a chick flick with a friend. So you don't like chick flicks, chicky? Not really, no. no? I'm not a chick. I'm like... <laughs> no, you're the whiskey lad. <laughs> So, yeah, whiskey so, lassie. so here's my confession. Okay, go ahead. A, a little while back. Don't worry, had, no one's listening. We had to do. <laughs> it's just between us. Bless me, Father, oh, for it's been internet. seven years since my last confession. Um, we had to do some training with regard to transgender people entering the workforce and being a little more inclusive and diverse. And so we did this training where... We had, I felt like she was a kindergarten teacher. So there's 20 of us sitting in this room and it was mandatory training, which is fine. I love to learn about all kinds of different things. And this is how she spoke. Good morning, everyone. Welcome and so happy to have you in my class this morning. So what you're saying is you wanted to punch her in the face. I wanted to rip her eyes out. I wanted to pull that shot. I wanted to rip her eyes out. (laughs) So we did this training where we talked about what what people see on the outside. We were compared to gingerbread cookies. That was the analogy we used. So on the outside, wow. I look like a girl. I was born with all the girl parts. On the inside, I might feel like I like girls. And then, like, it just went on and on and on and on, which was really bizarre. And then at the very end, she kind of made us do like this little personal questionnaire. And you don't have to share it with anybody. It's just for your own knowledge so that you understand the psychological part of who you are as a person. So I'm answering these questions. And basically, I'm a man stuck in a woman's body that likes men. So I'm a gay man stuck in a woman's body. Well, that's fun. What do you do with that little knowledge? Ah, does it change your shopping habits? Yeah, well, not really. Whiskey Lassie dresses like a girl, but Joanne McGinnis mostly always dressed like a boy ish. <laughs> and I like boy ish stuff. And don't ask me anything about The Bachelorette. Don't ask me anything about any housewife of anywhere of anything. <laughs> don't ask me to go to a chick flick. I lost a bet. Uh... So yeah, funny. I can't do any of that crap. That's I'd much rather so talk about funny. football and go on a motorcycle ride and drink whiskey and sail and sail. Oh, and hey, sail. one thing. By the way, you mentioned gingerbread cookies. Yeah. That would go really nice with this whiskey. Oh, you're so right. It would. Wouldn't it? I think when you said it, I may have drooled. I'm mm. just saying. 
I may, I may have drooled. <laughs> There's a little bit of that going on oh, here. I, I, I got a hint of ginger. Suggestion? I got a hint of ginger mm. earlier. But like a candy ginger, Damn, not like yeah. not like no 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 like a not yeah. like sushi ginger, not like mm, but a little no, candy no, 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 ginger. No. Yeah, 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 oh. candy ginger. And I've grown mm. to really like ginger. I never used to like it, but I really enjoy it now. It's really good. I literally eat candy ginger. I, mm, delicious, mm. delicious. I dice ginger every morning. Yeah. Every morning of my life, I dice ginger and it goes into my my chai every morning. In your chai? Oh, do tell. Oh, do tell. What tell do you do with Marianne? That. That's the question. Hell. Oh. <laughs> if you're dicing ginger, uh, what the hell's going on with Marianne? La, 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 la. We've gone off the rails. <laughs> That's here. all right. Um, so a few years ago, I, I, I love chai. I'm a He's chai, chai hound. Drinker. And chai, chai, I'm a chai, I'm chai hound. He's chai hound. Instagram. <laughs> I'm so and, looking uh, that up. Yeah, okay, he should yeah. be. No, it, it's just a hashtag. Okay. It's a hashtag. Okay, okay. So hey, I gave you that hashtag. Don't forget. You did. <laughs> and uh I'm always in search of a great chai. Okay. So when I go to a city, I you know look for the a coffee house that has allegedly the best chai. Okay. And my wife had uh one of her co-workers who's from India invited us to his home for a um kind of a traditional Indian dinner Ooh. with a bunch of other of their work team, whatever the hell they do. And uh, he had, in fact, I remember he brought, he had for me uh, some little miniatures of Paul John. He actually brought me back a bottle of Amrit one time that I still have from, from India, an Indian bottling of Amrit. It's bottled at 41.3% mm. because that's like the max that they can have actually in India or mm. something that can't, that's for, for not for export. There was this amazing spread of food. Like you traditional Indian foods. It was the colors were just popping, like watching a Bollywood movie. It was just amazing. It was just such a fun night. And then later in the evening, and I brought a bunch of whiskey. It was fun. And there were some Indian friends of theirs and they're in the kitchen and they're doing something around the, the stove. What they're making is tea, chai. And it wasn't like they took out like a, you know, some syrup out of the, you know, cabinet or, you know, a tea bag from, from Starbucks. Oh. They, they were making this thing. It was wonderful. So I had to watch this process and I got to watch the whole process of, of the, these people making chai in a traditional way. And there was an argument between four of these people because this little lady, she's not doing it right. And this guy's, <laughs> you're not doing it right. And no, you're not doing it right. And so I had to recreate this in my mind. This is like four years ago. And I've been kind of doing this now for like four years. And part of it is chopping up fresh ginger and infusing it in the water mm -hmm. and then you put in the black your black tea with a lot of other spices allspice and cinnamon and nutmeg and and such and then you add the milk at the end that is my chai every morning wow yes it's a lot of work <laughs> every morning i got one word for you nespresso milk optional if there was an espresso okay. version i'd be all over it but there is not an espresso version well actually there is we call it a what? we call it a dirty chai really oh that's got coffee in it though right that's good. But I don't drink coffee. That's why we call it a dirty chai. You uh, add like just a just a shot, a, like a half shot of espresso to a chai tea. Hmm. Oh my god, it is. It's better than my ex husband. Just saying. I have heard. <laughs> I, have, I have heard about this dirty chai. I see dirty chais on on certain oh, in certain coffee houses. I see that so good. As a, a thing you can get. It's so good, especially if you have it cold. Like it is just. Think of all the cold yes, ice dirty it's chai. An ice dirty chai. Just oh, think about wow, all the flavors. The or is it a dirty ice chai? Ice. Hmm. ice dirty chai? I think it's ice dirty chai. I think it's an ice dirty chai. You don't want dirty ice in your chai. I don't want dirty ice. No. no. Never. Never. <laughs> no. Well, the bottom of my, my Yeti mug that I take uh -huh. to work every morning is not pretty at the end mm -hmm. of the day. Everything above that bottom three eighths of an inch is great. So that's my ginger story, and I'm sticking to it. So we've had Angel's Whiskey ride tonight. We've talked to Miracle Workers. Does anyone else have any TV talk they want to bring yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Anything that's just like, that they want to just like, they got to tell me about. Okay. I, I found a show. Now, remember we did the Catastrophe episode? Recently, okay. yes, we did. So I did the Catastrophe episode. I'm still watching Catastrophe. I'm on like season three. And oh, you're rewatching it, you mean? Yeah, I'm rewatching it. And I got to say, it's funnier and darker than I remember. If you want dark... Joanne, you should watch the show. Catastrophe is pretty crazy. Writing that down. 
It's on Amazon Prime. Okay. Tree, what's it about? Well, you could listen to our podcast, One Show, One Drink, Catastrophe, and <laughs> what did we pair it with? What did we do with Catastrophe? What was the whiskey? We paired it with our something. Our, oh, the, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the Middletons. The Irish we did the, the Middleton. We did the Middletons, very rare, 2017. You're kidding. Okay. So there's two writers. It's Sharon Horgan, who's a she's Irish. She's an actress. She's a writer. She's a producer. And this guy, Rob Delaney. Rob Delaney, who is a American stand-up comedian, I guess. Yeah, I think he started in stand-up. Okay. Yeah. He's basically an actor. They got friendly on Twitter. They're like, hey, we should write together. So they come up with this show. So she's like a woman living in London. He's an American, goes to England, goes to London for work. They hook up in a bar. They basically just have a really good time for four days, have a whole lot of sex. They only use a condom twice. Three months later, she gives him a call, said, hey, Rob, guess what? I'm pregnant. So he decides to be the great white knight. And they decide to get married, and then all hell breaks loose from there. And that's the show. You're kidding. Are you guys are you guys screwing with my head? No. This is true. They decide to have a baby together. Marriage comes way later. They don't even know each other. Oh my god. They barely know each other. So and the, the the supporting cast is great and it's very, very good. It gets dark. It goes to some dark places. He he was an alcoholic. So he's on the wagon. He really is. Uh, oh, in real life he was like, too, yeah. He really is. He really, in real life, yeah. yeah. So he was on the wagon for like many, many years and then all hell breaks loose with these two. So, but it, it's really good. And they're, the writing is just ridiculous. It's just ridiculously good. And his mother in the show is? Carrie Fisher. And this is just before she dies. Yeah, uh, she just, just before she dies. Yep. Up until the Carrie Fisher part, you were talking about my childhood, but- Okay, <laughs> I might I might suffer from PTSD if I watch this show. So I don't know. It's it's, it's rough. My, we, I was watching it last night. My wife's like, I can't take any more of this. It's just oh, too intense. I gotta go. God. Yeah, it gets pretty it dark. Gets, okay. it, there's a lot of shit going on. But it's funny. Okay, it's funny though. Oh, so so my point was, so I was doing the catastrophe thing, and then of course I'm I'm trolling Sharon Horgan on Instagram, and she posts like you know she hasn't posted in a while. She's like, oh, I'm back and blah blah blah, and she talks about a few things she worked on. So she was executive producer on a show called Frayed, which takes place in Australia. Frayed. Yeah, I think I watched that. The, the woman was in England and yeah, she yeah, marries yeah. a guy. Yeah. And, you know, they lose their fortune and then she goes back mm. to Australia. Mm -hmm. Did you watch it? I, I started to. I didn't finish it. Oh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really good. I thought it got bizarre. Oh, it was. It was really, it was really strange, but it was really fun. It okay. It's really fun, though. You, you've both seen Finding Nemo, right? Mm-hmm. So remember yes. Gil? The Willem Dafoe fish, the, the angel fish. Oh, yeah. Yes. So imagine, yes. so remember, Gil was in the wild, right? Gil goes in the tank. And now Gil's got to go back to the wild. So this is essentially this character, right? Because she grew up in Australia. Mm -hmm. She leaves Australia, goes to England. She gets all civilized. Then everything hits the fan. She's got to go back to Australia. And she's back in the wild, you know, and she's pissed off all these people. So everybody's mad at her because she just kind of up and left and went to England and, you know, kind of became all this posh English woman and she's telling all these lies about how she grew up and all this stuff to her kids and you know they got to go back and kind of just deal with stuff so but it was really good I liked it I thought it was a really good show so what did Sharon Horgan have to do with this oh she was a producer oh, so she's an executive okay. producer and the woman the star of the show is actually an Australian stand-up comic Sarah Kendall yep. so she's actually a she's a stand-up comic and I guess she got the she started writing the show and all this crazy stuff so but it's really good I thought it was fun ah that looks fun it is fun dark ish not as dark as catastrophe but it but it is good it is really good i enjoyed it so watch that we'll watch the you watched inventing anna right listen i binged on that one you know it was weird because i liked the first episode then the next two episodes i was kind of like ah but then i got back into it again and then i enjoyed it i, I really liked um garner julie garner in it julia julia or julie is julie? it julie or julia julia yeah. garner Julia, yeah. I think. Ruth. I think it's Julia. Our girl Ruth yes, from Ozark. Yes, Ruth, Ozark. Ruth from yes, Ozark. That's yep. the reason I, I decided to watch it because I really yeah. liked her she's in good. Ozark. Yeah. She's good. You know what else she's good in? Have you seen the Americans? You're the second or third person that has talked about this, and I I can't find it. I don't know oh, where okay. it is. Where I'm is not it? sure either. It's either okay. on Prime or it's on Hulu. I'm not okay, sure well, where it's at these days. Time, I'll be able to find it, but I don't have Hulu. Great show. It might be on Hulu because it was it was an FX show. And I uh, I was late to the party on that one. My wife talked about it forever. I like Carrie. What's her name? Carrie? Carrie Russell. Yes. Felicity. I, I remember watching her from Felicity and I really, really liked her. So uh -huh. I tend to do that a lot. It's like if I if I like an actor. We like Matthew Reese because he's Welsh and he likes Pandaren. Right. Oh, well. He's like the unofficial brand ambassador, what, right? What, what is? He's, yeah, unofficial. What is not yeah. to like? He's cool. I like him. I like him a lot. Jason and Joshua had him on their podcast. Mm. He was great. He was really good. Pandaren is the worst tour I have ever been on. Really? In my distillery. Pandaren? History. Really? Yes. 
Wow. Yep. Why? What happened? Probably about six or seven of us from what I call the whiskey fabric. We were from all kinds of different places uh-huh. and, and it was yeah. an arranged tour. So it's not that we were VIPs by any means, but it was an arranged tour. They knew that like whiskey writers and bloggers were arriving. Yeah. And when we arrived, it's across the street from a nursing home. Really? And so <laughs> it gets weirder. Roll me right over. <laughs> so the people from the nursing home come over to the distillery and they kind of like walk. There's like a lap almost. So you kind of get there and you're like, is this the distillery? Because there's these people with their walkers walking around in the, really? oh like in the parking lot. Right. Oh, so that's totally weird. confused. That so I was like, funny. are we even, are we at the right place? Like. Did, did Google mouse? bring us somewhere at the wrong place? Anyways, we get in <laughs> and it was literally one of these tours. It was literally like a young student going, welcome to Pendaren Distillery. If you look to your left with a, with a Welsh accent, which I won't even try, but if you look to your left, I mean, if you look to your left, you will see that this is where we do the mash ton. And, and it was just, <laughs> it was horrendous horrendous wow. That's funny. it was bad what year was that bad. what year was 2015 that? or 2014 it was bad because that's probably when they bought the open when they opened that would bet and it was a little bit after the gentleman who actually helped them like create the product or whatever hadn't quite died yet so jim swan so yep. it hadn't was, quite it wait, wait hadn't, hadn't quite, quite died, died yet, yet. Hadn't oh, quite jim. Died yet. jim swan, oh, swan hadn't died yet died at yet. that point yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it was the most bizarre tour I had ever been on. That's sort of like the tour we had at Bowmore. It was sort of the same was thing. Was it? Bowmore was kind of this like 12 year old girl who didn't know anything. Script. And she was like her, it was like her summer job. And Rachel Barry didn't welcome you? Oh. <laughs> no. She was there at the time, right? She was with them when you were there. She was, I think, and yeah, she did. She was not there that day. Oh, yes, oh. we had, we got her niece. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, her goddaughter. It was actually her goddaughter. Her goddaughter from like they're not a blood relative. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It was it was a it was a, a slog, as they say. Okay, can we get us to the uh, gift shop and we'll uh, we'll make our way out of here? Uh, uh, that's funny. Yeah. I watched a uh, Reacher. Oh, I didn't like it. Really? No. You know, you you know what you just lost? You just lost your man trapped inside of a woman's body cred. Yeah. Oh, that's you're right. a woman. No, I'm kidding. I tease. So I'll tell you why I didn't like it. Why didn't you like it? Bad writing. The writing wasn't Bad. great. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. You can't go in thinking this is Shakespeare. No. My view is it's a show that knows what it is and it just kind of goes for okay. it. Okay. That's fair. That's kind of how yeah, I viewed it. Fair. Yeah, I mean it's it's cable television fair. You know, I thought it was this, fun. It's on. I, I what was it. on HBO? No, it was on Prime. Prime. It could have been on TBS five years ago, and yeah. you would have found it late night one time. And oh, what is this show? Oh, maybe I'll stick with it. Yeah, you know what it was? It was pulp. It was pulp. Total pulp. It, it was like it yeah. was pulp fiction. I mean, if you ever read the books, I mean, the books are you know they're nothing special, but they're kind of fun, and that's I what agree. this was. I I thought the individual. People were okay, not great. I liked the girl. I thought she was great. The girl was really good. My question to my daughter was, is this guy on the spectrum? Like, I was just like, (laughs) (laughs) he's got no personality. He's just like this very, you know, it's like, it it just, it's like, it was just, I was like, I don't get it. Cause I didn't watch, I didn't watch it when, um, what's his face did it as a movie. Oh, Tom Cruise? Yeah, I didn't watch it. I'm not a Tom Cruise fan. So I didn't watch that. Well, but what I nah, found same. was Ditto. interesting. Again, if you if you look at me from a scientific perspective, like I got my feet up and I'm watching it with my daughter and I'm watching this and I'm like, this man doesn't work for the police and they're all trampling through this person's, they've got, they're walking through blood, like leaving their footprints and touching everything. And my daughter's looking at me like, mom, it's a show. I'm like, but it's not real. It's, this is, this is bad. This is just bad. But- but remember, it's also America, well, so, you know, all right, fine. it's a little bit of the Wild West, you know? Are we in the middle of watching anything that's uh, just, like, sucked us in? There's a show on HBO called Somebody Somewhere. Oh, I'm watching that, too. I really like it. Do tell, do tell. What's the woman's name? Uh, Bridget, I can't think of her name. Bridget Everett. Bridget Everett. Yes. And she's just kind of, I guess, I don't know, she's kind of, kind of a lost person. Mm-hmm. Right. But she goes back home to Kansas. Like she goes back when her sister was dying of cancer Oof. and she's kind of there for the final days. The sister's not there. You never see that part. Okay. This is kind of like the aftermath. 
and she's got another sister and her parents, and there's a whole lot of dysfunction. And she's a little lost, right? Would you say she's a little lost, Aaron? Trying to kind of find what she wants to do with her life and all that kind of stuff. Like she's in a job she doesn't really like, but she's made some friends. This is her hometown. Right. So she kind of reacquaints herself with some of her high school friends. And apparently she was a really good singer. Okay. And this one guy's like, I used to love to hear you sing. He brings her to this like church group that's kind of meeting like on the sly. Mm-hmm. And they start like they have a choir and she starts singing. And, you know, she's kind of just kind of, you know, getting re-energized. What's up, Aaron? Uh Oh, all right. Let's see when he comes back. The beauty of this is we could just kind of keep going and, you know, see what's going on. So I should probably stop talking about the show. Probably. Or should I keep talking about the show? <laughs> Hang on, he's back. There he is. Sorry about that. So so back to somebody somewhere. Oh. Would you say she's kind of lost and kind of trying to find her way? She's kind of lost. She's trying to find herself. She's 40-something, late 30s, and she's come, in, had come back to her hometown. Her parents have got issues. Aging parents. One's an alcoholic. Dad's got a farm. Dad's got a farm and he really can't take care of it anymore. So her and her sister help out a lot. And it seems like a kind of a big farm for one person to take right. care of. And uh small town. It's actually Manhattan, Kansas, which is where Can- University of Kansas is. Oh, okay. It's sad and it's funny. And it's it's really good though. But it's like, but there's like quiet moments mm. and it's yeah. and it's beautifully shot. It really is. She's really good. It's Kansas. Yeah. The friend is really good. Uh what's his name? He's a I think he, Joel Hiller. He's a Sarah Live guy, isn't he? I think he was an SNL guy. I, I don't know. He's yeah. really good too. Everybody's really good on the show. It's it's just very, very good. And it feels real. Okay. You know, like the people feel real and the family and all the stuff they're going through and all the stuff. So it's good. It's it's really good. Uh, the guys producing it are the Duplass brothers. They didn't write or direct yep. it, but they've, they've done a lot of stuff. Jay they've and Mark Duplass. Mm-hmm. So they've done a lot of interesting shows. Cool. Wrote it down. You know, they, they, they got a nice sensibility. I, I kind of like the way they're, you know, they're, they're storytellers. Okay. So it's not a lot of flash. They're just real, like, human stories. Awesome. So, And there was another show that they had years ago, Together. Uh, what was it, Togetherness? Togetherness, That yeah. was fantastic. That was good. That was HBO, too. That was so good. Yeah, that was, was also that, really yeah, good. HBO. Oh. Yeah. I am watching a show on Hulu called Single Drunk Female. Oh, I tried that. How was and it? What would you think? It's good. Yeah. It's very good. It's about a 20-something girl who works for a social media company called Bzzz instead of BuzzFeed. And she's, <laughs> but she's basically a functioning alcoholic. And she gets into a fight with her. And this is the first episode. She gets into a fight with her boss, boss about something. And bombs come over the head with a telephone and gets fired. And uh, go to rehab. She has to go to rehab. This is in New York City. She has right. to move back to Boston, where she's from, and move in with her mom. Who and her mom is Ali Sheedy. The girl's father had passed away of cancer or something. Ali Sheedy's like close to sixty. Wants to get on with her life without her kids around. Now her adult daughter's back, who's got her in rehab and can't drink. So she, mom has wine every night, and she wants to date, and she can't date because there's you know, her daughter's around, and uh, her daughter's trying to figure out how to be sober. And you kind of watch this clock every episode of how many days sober she's going through rehab. You watch her kind of go through this and try to, you know, get her life back together. And it's very good. It's only about a half hour, 20 minutes. Good show. I recommend it. And I'm also watching for more pulp. I'm watching, uh, well, I don't know what it's called. It's called. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Pam. I don't know. I don't really know the title. I think it's Pam and Tommy Lee. Or- oh, oh, that my one. Yeah, God. Yeah, That's on the yeah. Disney that? channel, which I'm like, the what? Disney channel is seriously, it's on the Disney channel. It's interesting because I, I don't remember the whole story. And so this is interesting seeing the story play out. Seth Rogen is the guy who takes the, the tape. He's like working on their house in Malibu and Tom Ely won't pay him and won't allow him to get his tools back because he's, he's a carpenter. He's like, you guys did a crappy job. I'm not paying you and you can't have your crap back. And he breaks into the house and steals, he, op- he cracks open a safe, doesn't know what's in the safe, but he breaks open the safe and it's all this crap, you know, it's guns and money and nothing. There's some values to stuff, but there's this tape. And then he meets up with Offerman. Nick. What's his name? Oh, Nick, Nick Offerman. Offerman. Who is a porn, he's a porn director in the Valley here in LA. You know, he can do anything. He can get anything sold. And and, and he they go on this way of, how are we going to monetize this thing? This is... The beginnings of the internet. That's actually a pretty interesting thing because they, there's this thing. We, we can't sell this in a store. How are we going to sell this thing? And somebody comes to him, hey, 
you could do this thing on the, the internet. What the hell is the internet? We have a website. What's a website? It's really interesting. And and the two people that play Tommy Lee and Pam Anderson. Yeah, how's uh, how's Winter Soldier? Is that Winter Soldier? Yeah, it's uh, Sebastian Stan. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I didn't know where he's that. from. He's really good. And the, uh, Lily, what's her Lily Allen? Uh, her I can't think of her name, but she was in Baby Driver. She's really good. I mean, she's got the Pam Anderson thing. Uh-huh. And I, there's an episode where what her beginnings were. Also Canadian. That's what I was going to say. Pride and joy of Canada. Is that what you're saying? Pride and joy. I mean, I mean. <laughs> Goes to a football game and she gets on the Jumbotron and some guy from Labatt's comes up to her and says, hey, you could be the next Labatt's girl. And she calls and she becomes a Labatt's model. And before you know it, Playboy calls her. And the rest is history. Of course, it's going to be a tragic story. And she, it's very sad in parts of it. Because she loses a baby and, and she's a big star, but she wants more out of her acting career than just being on Baywatch. And, you know, she's seen as just this one Barbie doll. It's, it's pretty tragic, actually. It's kind of fun. And uh, it's an interesting look at the, that era, the 1990s, whatever that was. I don't remember much of that era. Not because I was drinking heavily, but because I had two small children. That'll do it to you. Mine, mine were a little bit later than that. <laughs> Joanne, anything you've been watching recently that you uh, want to mention? Again, I, I don't know why I've gotten on this kick of walking, watching documentaries quite a bit, but Netflix had a Monty Python truth, and then underneath it's, it says The Lawyer's Cut, and it's really? fascinating. Really? When did this come out? Was it recently? Uh, I don't know it came out i'd have to look it up because i've seen a couple and and they go into uh was it terry jones no not terry jones who was the one that really had the, the drinking problem he was the first to pass away yes graham chapman yeah graham, graham chapman, chapman. He was the first yeah, to pass yeah, away. yeah 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 because he was like they didn't even he know was he was mess. an alcoholic like until it was way past the point of they just thought, oh that's just him like you know yeah they said he was pretty rough he to was deal with really bad it was like after yeah. after lunch hour that he was useless it's called monty python the truth and i, I believe it's called the, it's called almost the truth there you go almost the truth and then underneath it's like the lawyer's cut which is hilarious when did it come out is there a date on it it uh, looks Eric? like a 2009? What? Oh, wow. Well, that makes sense because Terry Jones... Terry Jones passed away, right? He did. He died yeah, of cancer? Terry right? Jones. No, I thought it was related to the disease he had, which was like Alzheimer's or, or something to that effect. I may have seen it. I had never seen it before and was Six, kind of... Seven uh-huh. episodes, it looks like. Yeah, I was kind of like, you know, when you, when you sit down and go, I want to watch something, and then you just start like flipping and flipping and flipping, and you spend 20 minutes just flipping... I have this thing now that I'm single where on Valentine's Day, since I don't have a significant other, I watch a Monty Python something. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. I just finished watching Life of Brian. Sat here, died (sighs) laughing. I don't care how many times I watch it. And then found this. It was like, fuck yeah. You know, put my feet up and poured a whiskey and away I went. Right. So it was was awesome. There you go. That's awesome. I'm going to watch it. really good. I really liked it. I learned things that I didn't know. Do either of you watch Euphoria? No. I don't. I made it through the first season. I mean, it's good. It's a little gritty. My daughter loves it. And as you know, with with two teenage boys, it's like, uh, you know, it's a little odd. Of course, all the people that are playing the teenagers are in their 20s. That's beside the point. Uh, But it is pretty good. Second season actually is better. I think it's a a better season. And, And I like that they're doing little side stories. Zendaya is fantastic, especially this season. Give her another Emmy. What about movies? I haven't seen a movie for a while. What are the- well, with the Oscar buzz, I try to watch some of them. There's a Korean film, the the one that's got all the buzz. What is it called? Is it is it Drive My Car or I can't think of what the name of the movie is. But it's going to premiere on HBO Max, I think, okay. in a couple of weeks. It's supposed to be excellent. Like Parasite excellent? Uh, Yeah, it's supposed to be really, really good. Did you guys see Parasite? I did. I really liked it. God. I did not. Parasite I was cool. Parasite it. was bizarre. I loved it. That was really, really good. Yep. Korea. It's the hot place right now. Between Squid Game and, and these yep. Oscar nominated films, this Drive My Car is supposed to be really, really good. That's what it's called. It's Drive called my Drive, my Drive, my yeah. Drive My Car. Drive My Car. And I think it premieres. Is it Japanese? Oh, oh no, it's Japanese. I think it's Korean. Japanese. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's yeah. Japanese. But it's by, it's by uh, Ryusuke Hamaguchi. Oh, very well done. So it, it looks pretty good. My, my kids are obsessed with anime, so. There's a lot of Japanese going on in the house. I want to see Belfast. You want to see which one? Belfast. <gasps> uh, I saw it. I loved it. 
I, I want to see it. Did you? I want to see it. You know what? I went in with high expectations. I think my expectations were too high. I think I'll like it better the second time. I always keep them low. What didn't you like about it? Again, I think it was just an expectations thing. Okay, but what were you expecting? I, I don't know. Color. I saw the trailer. It was black and white. No, I'm fine with that. I'm good with that. I, I thought the acting was great. What's her name was okay. fantastic. Judy Dench, yeah. as always. Kieran mm -hmm. Hines was, was yep. her husband. He was really good. And Jamie Dornan was great. And the woman okay. was great. I think I just need to see it again. So, I mean, I didn't hate it. I liked it, but I would give it like a B plus. But why? Why, why, why? I don't know. I, I am an emotional watcher. So if I'm not invested, going back to Miracle yes. Workers, by the end, I'm rooting right. for everybody. So they okay. want me over. You know, I care about what's going to happen to the couple. I want to see the kids go. Now I understand God <laughs> and his problems and his issues. Right. So now it all makes sense. You know, so by that point, okay. I'm all in. So it has to all win right. me over. Like, remember Succession? When it first started, it took about four it's, episodes. It's the investment. You got to yeah. get invested so, in the darn thing. Right. I want to see Licorice Pizza. Me too. There's only one no. reason I wanted to see Licorice Pizza, and that's because of the damn trailer. And it had me on a Bowie yeah. kick for about two weeks after that. Yeah. I see it. The it trailer is really fantastic. Is so very well done. I would give it an Oscar just for the trailer. It's a good trailer. Yeah. What is it? Life on Mars? Is that the song? I think it's Life on Mars, or, yeah. Or Space Oddity or one of those Space songs? Space Oddity. Yeah. Ah, so good. So good. I have this uh, connection to, to Licorice Pizza because that was a, uh, it was a record store chain here in Los Angeles or mm. California in the 70s and 80s. And I worked at a record store in college in the 80s and kind of a bigger chain. And there was a Licorice Pizza like four stores away. And it was the cool store. Would you like steal records from them and try to sell them? I wouldn't steal records, but we would, the manager of our store would make us go over there to kind of see what's on sale over there. And we would, uh -huh. you, know, you know, Hey, Oh, well they have the Ramones. Hey, we should sell the Ramones. And so we <laughs> would, uh, you know, go in there and check out the licorice pizza. So, uh, but it's, you know, it's a very LA based movie and the, the girl from Heim is the lead and the boyfriend is um, the son of the guy that killed himself a few years ago. The actor, he played Truman Capote. Oh, um, oh, uh, 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 oh, another method actor. His, oh, my his, God. He, he, that's, this is the son that plays him. This son? Really? That's the son. Because he's in yeah. a lot of the Paul Thomas Anderson movies. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's in oh, Boogie Nights. So, Paul, so this is fascinating. Isn't that terrible? We'll get to it. Googling that shit. I just saw him because, what's it called? It's been on a constant loop in my house. Um, Fantastic Mr. Ripley or whatever it's called. So he's in that, too. What's the hell's his name? Philip Seymour Hoffman. Seymour Hoffman. So this is his there you son go. who plays the boyfriend. And uh, the, the love interest, I guess. And uh, it was as bad as Wordle just now. The thing is about this story. <laughs> well, <laughs> so the, the Heim family lived in in the valley, and Paul, what's his name? Paul, Paul Thomas Anderson. He was the Heim mom. She's a teacher, elementary school teacher. He was a student of hers, like in third grade, and she's an art teacher. She would tell her kids, her daughters, you know, that Paul Anderson guy. He was in my class, and he, I've got this picture that he drew in third grade and she has this picture and they used to hear about this all the time and then one day i don't know how he hooked up with the heim girls while they're trying to oh he directed their first video he's still a valley guy and they're still a valley family and they've kind of it's all come full circle so and in the movie apparently her sisters play her sisters in a couple scenes and her mom and dad play her mom and dad in a couple scenes and it's like they're not really acting they're just being my mom and dad <laughs> So kind of fun. So that's on my radar on the on the Oscar stuff and Belfast. I want to I do want to see those too. Okay, but yeah. but but that drive my car coming to HBO it. Max and drive my I car. It. I want to check it out. It's supposed to be long, but it's supposed to be really good. I don't even know what it's about. I don't really care. I kind of like going in not knowing what's going on. It's it's actually kind of better. I think it's kind of fun. There's a so. dog movie. What's the dog movie that's in the, in, the, in the Oscar? Oh my god, that one blew my brain. That one blew my brain. Is it good? Is there a dog in it? It's called the. The power of the dog. The power of the dog. Oh, the um, what's her name? Jane Campion movie. Oh, it's Jane Campion right. with yeah. uh, with Cumberbatch yeah. and and what's his name is in it. What's the guy's name? The guy he was in the Fargo TV show. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. good. It was a complete slow burn because the first hour I'm like, what the hell is going on? But it was so beautiful to watch. How how could I not watch it? It was absolutely stunning to watch. The music yep. was fantastic too, and and they really ratcheted up the tension mm -hmm. by the end. What I really liked about it, I'm not going to spoil it is I really had no idea where it was going in the end. They really yep. threw me. And it took me a couple of seconds to figure out what the hell just happened. But it was good. And what's his name was actually, was, was okay. What's that guy's actor? Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. He was pretty good. 
He did a really good job. Remember I said I'm the one that spoils everybody's movies? I'm like, because I figure shit out like yeah, halfway yeah. through the movie. I did not uh-huh. see that coming. I didn't see the ending coming at all. Like, it was one of those moments where I think I literally rewound it. Like, I was like, what? Uh-huh. And kind of went, you know, and then sat there for a second and, and rewound it as far back as I kind of kind of tried to figure it out and then kept watching it and still didn't like I was like oh my god like and then I raved about the movie my friends all thought I was nuts they were like I didn't think it was that good I was like oh my god like that was amazing oh so it's it's Benedict Cumberbatch Kirsten Dunst Jesse Plemons and Jesse, oh Jesse Plemons yeah from, yeah. Ra- yes. from Breaking Bad I, I didn't realize he's married to Kirsten Dunst what what? They have a couple kids together. Mind blown. Mind blown. He's like early 30s and she's like 39. Oh, that's terrible. They got like two oh kids God, together. Oh my God, that's like terrible. Older woman. No, I'm just saying. They got two kids together the whole bit. Whatever. You know, they're happy. They're good. And they're making movies together. What I think you guys do really well is you do the separation, the degrees of separation extremely well. Like throughout this entire, we'll call it podcast, whatever it is, this, this, this thing that you guys <laughs> do, this, this thing, thing that you guys thing. love to do. You you do this well. I watch TV and uh, all I do is I look at people. And I know that person from someplace else. That's all I do. I don't even know there's a story going on. But but you do that so well. Like just every single story is linked somehow. Like two degrees of separation. It's like weird. you 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 guys are excellent. Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Well, you do even yes, better. Yeah. You're doing like two degrees. Like this is just <laughs> my mind has been blown like five or six times, and it has nothing to do with the whiskey. It's more about the conversation. So thank you. But you know, it's weird. There is these yeah. weird connections in Hollywood. It's incestuous, and they only hire oh, the kids. It's true. Well, like the guy that does Euphoria, his name's Sam Levinson. Remember Barry Levinson? That's his dad. So yeah. so you grow up around all this stuff, and you eventually get into the business, right? Look at Ben Stiller. Yes. Exactly. Still Ramira. So the best way to get into Hollywood? Have a parent. Ben Stiller's pumping some new new show. Yeah, it's supposed to be really good. My wife watched it. She it's said on it was Apple really good. Plus, right? Yeah, Severance. I oh, that's cool. I watched it. <laughs> Duh, I watched it. <laughs> yes, I forgot what, that he was part of that. Yes, that was weird. Yeah, he directed it. I think he doesn't direct the whole thing, though, does he? I don't know. I'm not sure. Apparently, he had cancer. What? At one point, he was like sick for a while. Yes, he had prostate cancer. So what are you saying? That doesn't count? Is that what you're saying? Sorry? Are you saying that doesn't count? What did you say? Sounds like you're discounting it. It counts. It counts. <laughs> it sounds like you're discounting. He had prostate cancer. It was nothing. It was. It was. Uh, it was nothing. It counts. It believe me. It counts. <laughs> well, I won't go into any further conversation about this. Uh, <laughs> um, it's like Czechoslovakia. They zip in. in they zip out. They it's zip in. They zip out. That's a stripes <laughs> reference for all those who haven't seen our listen to our stripes episode. They changed uh, the name. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we we have and but you know we normally we in our in one of our in our longer episodes which is this oh, is kind yeah. of this is kind of turning episodes. into a longer episode uh, we always do a, a memorial bit and we have to i want to add a, a name here ivan mm. reitman a canadian and uh, he passed away i think last mm-hmm. week at, at yeah. the ripe old age of like 75 ghostbusters right yeah ghostbusters stripes Animal yeah. House, Meatballs. And then speaking of family and incestuous nature of Hollywood, you got Jason Reitman. Who did the new Ghostbusters. I actually liked the last Ghostbusters. I saw it and I cried. The one that his son did. Yeah, it was I want to really see well that. really well done. That's the, and all the, the kid from uh, yes. Stranger Things, isn't it? Yeah. But it was really well done. Like, I think it'll speak to a lot of audiences. And it's got the sexiest man alive, Paul Rudd. Who doesn't That's age. True. I don't get it. Like, what no, the hell? No, he doesn't. He's great. Who was in I Love You Man? Yep. I Love You Man. I Love You Man. That's right. <laughs> Which is a big rush movie. Oh, yeah. And they're Canadian. See, it's all connected. We can connect any two things to Canadians, but it all comes down to Canadians. Big country, not a lot of people, but so connected. Yes. That's right. That's right. Big country, lots of connections. Big country. We could talk all night, but we really should let this this wonderful woman yeah. get to bed because she has to go save the world and Canada tomorrow. Her only job is to keep the riffraff out, a.k.a. us. Americans, yes. <laughs> the riffus of the riffraff. Yeah. See, we put the riff in riffraff, mm. and she's trying to get the riff out of riffraff. I don't know. I've I've always considered the fact that you guys put the fun in dysfunction, to be quite honest, but... <laughs> well, we do that, too. Yeah, we do that really well. That's, that's our specialty. And remember, F is for family. F is for family. 
Yeah. The only F word I know is family. Joanne, we cannot thank you enough for coming on our little uh, dog and pony show. Wait, who's the dog and who's the pony? I was going to say, which one's the bitch? I mean. Hey now. Hey, hey. hey now. Hello. Hello. We'll say it's Mike because Mike's not here, right? We'll just, we'll blame him. That's out. right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Oh, uh, this was okay. fun as Always. usual. This was great. We talked whiskey. We talked the Angels Envy Caribbean cask. Delish. Rum, rum cask. Rum cask. Delish. Right? Delicious. We loved it again after yeah. revisiting it. And uh, we talked Miracle Workers, which we, I think, we kind of give it all a thumbs up. I'm going to finish it. Slow and then a uh, aha. Get to episode four. Much like Succession, get to episode four. And it's only 20 minutes an episode. I'm on season three and I'm going to plow through this one and i and actually there's a season four coming and i'm i'm looking forward to it you'll waste a lot less time on miracle workers than you will on tiktok joanne thank you so much for coming on it was great to see you again and visit it was so fun thank you so much for having me it was really nice to see you guys again and where can these fine folks see our show or listen to this this thing you can find us on apple podcasts Mm -hmm. spotify stitcher audible and google and of course you could always find us on boozedancing.com if you have questions, comments, show, drink, or cocktail suggestions, email us at boozedancing at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Subscribe, rate us, give us a couple likes. We're available in Canada now, I believe. You are. Well, not in every province. I believe we're not available in Saskatchewan. Oh, no, no. It's Quebec. Nothing is available in Quebec. So is Quebec like China where they just shut off the internet? No, I would never say that out loud. No, never. You can't say that, but we can the Great Wall of Quebec. <laughs> All right, folks. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Good night, gentlemen. Cheers.